Welcome to Mission Independent Baptist Church, our Friday night service. Uh, we have some special guests. We have the Moo family with us tonight. We got uh, Sailor. Uh, he's a deacon in uh, Lincoln Baptist Church in Nebraska. They came all the way from Nebraska just to hang out and uh, just praise God and come to church tonight and also see a few things here in Illinois. So praise God they're with us. We got Miss Lurleen. And uh, you know what? We got Jesus with us. Amen? Amen. So we're going to sing God Leads Us Along, page 73. In shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads His dear children along. Where the water's cool flow bathes the weary one's feet, God leads His dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children along. Sometimes in the valley, in the darkness of night, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song. In the night season and all the day long. Though sorrows befall us and Satan oppose, God leads his dear children along. Through grace can we conquer, defeat all our foes. God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Away from the mire and away from the clay, God leads his dear children along. Away up in glory, eternity's day. God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood. Some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. You know, some through the fire, we were just talking, uh, we were praying in our prayer request for the people in Burma, the Korean people, the people in Burma, the Burmese government, the soldiers are attacking them right now. So we asked for a prayer request for them, pray for them that God would... Uh, Give them a hand of support there and protect them from the people uh, from the from the military there. You know we don't know about that in the United States when they said through some through the fire. We don't got a lot of people. You know firing people going to kill us because we say we trust Jesus Christ. The Korean people are Christian farmers and the Burmans don't want that. They've been trying. It's the longest civil war going on for almost 80 years now in the world. So we need to pray for them. Amen. Amen. I'm going to teach tonight in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verses 30 to 37, and I title this The Right Road, The Right Road. Let me, let me pray. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord, for uh, just for your church here. I thank you, Lord, for the doors open. I thank you for this Bible, this holy Bible that we can learn from you, Lord. Lord, I pray for the Holy Spirit to speak your words and not my words, and to teach us and give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, Lord. We pray that you just uh, bless the service tonight and be with us. Keep Satan binded. And, Lord, I pray for your will in everything. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. All right, I'm going to read uh, Luke chapter 10, 30 to 37. And Jesus answering said, 
a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. You know, Jesus wants us to have mercy on people. He, you know, he wants us, you know, to, in this life, you know what, there's so many people lost in the world, they're headed for hell, we got to have mercy on them, we got to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ, how he died on the cross and shed his blood to pay for their sins, and you know what, if we don't tell them, who's going to tell them? You know, we need people to stand up in America and around the world and get the gospel message out. Because you know what? Jesus said he's coming back quickly. You know what? Once everybody hears a clear, present message, I believe God the Father is going to tell Jesus, come back. So, you know what? On the road, on the road here it says in verse 28, and Jesus answering said, so Jesus was talking to a guy who was trying to justify himself just a little while ago. He said, I've done all this stuff. But then he told, you know, he told him, uh, he said, uh, and he, he, who is my neighbor? So Jesus told him, you know, your neighbor, you know who your neighbor is? Every single person in this world is your neighbor. Every person you come in contact with, they're your neighbor. Because, you know what, they're, they're in front of you. You have to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus answered, said, a certain man. So a certain man. Who's a certain man? It could be anybody. It could be me, you, anybody. And they went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, you know, and uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, Jerusalem to Jericho, it's like 17 miles, it's a 17 mile stretch, and it's, 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 it's crooked roads, it's got hills and turns, it is not a place, not a lot of people travel there, and there's a lot of thieves, just like there, there was 2,000 years ago, people robbed people and beat people like they did this man, People get robbed in this city right right now. There's nothing different. So it's a certain man. Is any any of us could be any one of us throughout throughout our lives. You know, we're going to work. We're going to church. We're going to the store. We're going to friends' leisure. Thought you know somebody could rob us. So these people. The guy was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. You're on the road in your life. You're going through life, and you know it represents us just like him. The world today is filled with sin. The world's filled with sin, so we have to be careful. There's evil wickedness, ungodly people everywhere. If they don't trust Jesus Christ, their father's the devil, so you have to be careful. You know, there's thieves, robbers, carjackers in this city alone. Every tonight you'll read in the paper or hear on the news, you know, untrustworthy people. There's ungodly people. There's so much sin. Um, you know, he took it says here that in verse 27. Or 28. 30. I'm sorry. And Jesus answered, a certain man went down from Jerusalem. So he went down and he fell among thieves. So some thieves came out and they started beating him, which stripped him of his raiment. So they took his clothes. I don't know if they beat him with sticks. They could have knives. They could hit him with rocks, you know. They took his clothes, stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him. So they hurt him. He was actually say he was wounded. And um, and they departed. So they left him half dead. I don't know if you ever felt half dead. If you had the flu, you've been really sick, and you're at home, and you feel like you're half dead. I've been in box. I've been hit so many times. A few fights, I felt like I was half dead. you got to recuperate. It takes you a week. Or if you have a bad cold or a virus, man, you don't feel like you're going to die, and it takes three, four days to recuperate. Well, so this man was half dead. You know, so let's look at, uh, you know, James 4, 7, and 8. James 4, 7, and 8. 
Just as evil lurked around that path, evil lurks around our path these days, so we have to be careful. Let's look at James 4, 7, and 8. And when we're on the road, our, the road's our life. Everywhere you go is the road. Everywhere you go is the road in this life. So this man was going from, from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, and he got robbed. He got beat up. So James 4, 7 and 8 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So live. if you're saved, you live in the spirit. You don't live in the flesh. Because you can still live in the flesh and do everything as the people in the world. But submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. Resist the temptation of the flesh. He'll flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Once you have God's protection on the road, you don't have to worry. Because when God, God protects all. God, God is the highest power of all. The devil listens to God. You have to just stay, stay focused, stay in prayer, stay in your Bible, stay in your King James Bible and your Holy Word daily, pray daily, ask, ask for God's protection. You know, the evil lurks around this path, just as evil lurks among us today. Uh, you know, we have two roads in life we can go. People have two roads. Let's look at these two roads. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. We got to stay on the main road. Let's look at Matthew 7, 13 and 14. There's two roads you can go. Let's take a look at these roads. You know, this man was on a road and he got robbed, you know. It says a certain man, so it could be any one of us. So it depends on what road you travel. Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter ye at the straight gate. So the straight gate's a narrow, it's a narrow way, very small, very narrow. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So narrow is the way to heaven. You got to live narrow. You got to get on that straight path, the narrow path. You know what? The big way, go this way, that way, that leads to destruction. In the next verse it says, it says, uh, verse 14, Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, few there be there to find it. And But no, 13, it says, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So broad is the way that leads to hell, and many there be, many there be which go in thereat. So many are going to go into hell. You know what? They're not going to trust Jesus. They don't want to stay on that narrow road, that straight path. They want to get off the road. They want to go here. They want to go there. They want to have fun in this world. You know you know what? It's pleasure of sin for a season. Going out drinking, having fun. You know, they get into all kinds of sin. First they lust and they have sin, and then sin bringeth forth death. You know, you have to stay on that straight path. You know what? People say, you're no fun because, you know, you go to church, you... You don't do nothing. No, I have fun. I trust Jesus Christ. I'm going to heaven one day. I don't have to worry about this. This life's going to pass by. When Jesus comes, I'm going to be with him. Amen? We're going to be with the Lord. So we need to get on that straight, narrow path, on that narrow road. You know, we have two roads we can travel. One road leads to heaven. The other road leads to, he to hell. So we don't want to be on that road. We want to be on the road that leads to heaven. Amen? Let's look. At verse 31, back in Luke 10. And then it says, so these people left him, and at the end of 30, it says, they left him half dead. This man was just laying there bleeding. He, you know, they hit him with, who knows, sticks, rocks, kicked him, took his clothes, took his money, took his things, wounded him. He was bleeding. He's laying there. He's half dead. And it says in verse 31, and by chance, so this is just, you know, by chance, so a priest, there came down a certain priest, so this is anyone, any kind of a, a priest, so this was probably a Jewish priest here, and he came that way, when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, so he seen him laying there, he was a priest, he knew better, God, and he studied God's word, he's a priest, he knows to help people when they're in time of need, and he went to the other side, and just walked past him, you know, he knew what the law said, and God says, but he didn't have the love of God for, for his neighbor. He didn't want to help him. That the law teaches us what to do, and the Bible teaches us what to do. But this man didn't care what, what the, the Bible said. You know, he said he, he passed by on the other side. He uh 
He knew the law, but he didn't do it. He didn't help this man. He should have helped this man. So his priest went by on the other side, and he passed by on the other side. Let's look at... Oh, let's look. Okay, so then, so then it says in verse 32, And likewise, a Levite. So here's one from the tribe of Aaron. He's a Levite. So he's a Levitical priest. He was a priesthood. The royal pri Likewise, a Levite one. He was, he was at the place. So he came past and seen the guy laying there hurt too, bleeding and stuff. And he came and looked upon him. He was like, he looked upon him. He should have helped him. He knew better to help the man. He didn't help the man. And he passed by on the other side. He went away too and passed by. You know, the Levite, he's from the from the tribe of Levi. They served as priest overseers of the children of Israel. And, you know, he didn't help them. But then, let's look here in verse 33. But a certain Samaritan. So this is just a regular person. This is a non-Jewish from Samaria. He's a certain as he journeyed. He came where he was. So he saw the man. He had compassion on the man. And when he saw him, he compa had compassion on him. So he did what he was... He, he did what God wanted him to do. The other people didn't do what God wanted him to do. So here, the priest saw the man. The Lev Levite looked on the man. The Samaritan helped the man. So the two guys of God, they were false prophets, false teachers. They didn't help him. They didn't help him. They should have did what they were supposed to instructed by what God's law say to help people. They didn't help their neighbor. Let's look at you know. Let's look at uh, James four, fifteen to seventeen. If you have the love of God, anyone is your neighbor anywhere and everywhere. So let's look at James 4, 15 through 17. James 4, 15 through 17. It says, for that you ought to say, if the Lord will, shall we live and do this. But now you, re that's not what I'm looking for. George, 4, 15 through 17. Oh, yeah. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. So when you go places, you say, it's God's will. You know what? If you, if, you know, you say, next week, I'm going to go fishing. You know what? You better say, it's God's will that you go fishing because you know what? You may not be around next week. You know, you got it's God's will. We shall live and do this or do that. We shouldn't boast at what's going to happen. But now you rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. So we can't boast of what's going to happen. And then it says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So the priest and the Levite, they knew it was right to help this man, but they didn't help help this man, so that was sin unto them. So you know, they didn't help the man. They should have helped him. And, the, and uh, you know, the Holy Spirit guides and directs us and keeps our path. In, he guides our path to do right. You know, it's the Lord's will, not our will. The sa safety is of the Lord. Let's look at Proverbs 31, 21, 31. Proverbs 21, 31. Proverbs 21, 31. Proverbs 21 31 says the horse is prepared against the day of battle but safety is of the Lord so you know what safety is of the Lord we have to pray wherever we go before we leave before we travel we have to pray Lord please protect our you know protect guide our path the Holy Spirit will guide your path the Lord protect safety is of the Lord we can't, you know, we can't brag, I did this, I want this, I did this on my own. If you say you did it, like, ah, I got this there. No, God got you there. God got you there. You know, if you say you got you there, evil, God said that's evil. You know, the Holy Spirit leads you to do what's right. You know, the God in you, you know, God lives in you. If you trust the Lord Jesus, God's in you, and you see somebody laying there wounded, you're going to help them. You're the good Samaritan. Who's the good Samaritan? Anybody who's got God in them, who's yeah. got, you know, you, 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 you do what's God's will. You know, this man was half dead. We are to love our neighbors as we love our, as ourselves. We are to take a chance and help other people, no matter if it costs us, if, if they're in distress, peril, or in times of trouble, we are to show mercy 
and have no and no matter for, for risk or reward. We're not supposed to do anything to get any gain or this. Just do it because it's right, because God tells us to do what's right. So if this man is sick, I'm going to take him in the car. Let me take you to the hospital. Let me get what you need. You don't have money. Let's go see what we can help you here. Be like the good Samaritan. Amen. Uh, we're going to go to verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, he came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. So he had compassion on him. And what did he do? He went to him. So he went and he helped him up. He bound up his wounds. So he, he must have had some kind of maybe bandages or uh, uh, some kind of cloth or something. He says, pouring in oil and wine. So I guess oil and wine will like burn it, but it'll, it'll uh, get any infection. You know, if you use alcohol, that, that uh, hinders infection. It burns. It stings. If you get a cut, you pour alcohol on it. It burns, but it'll help disinfect it. And he set him on his own beast. So he didn't have a car. He put him on his horse or on his mule or his donkey. And he put him on there and he brought him to an inn. So he took him to the hotel or the motel of that time. And he took care of him. So he took care of him. What we're supposed to do is, you know, you know, we're supposed to help people. We're supposed to, in our lives, we got supposed to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. When we see people, we got we to gotta be the good Samaritan and tell people about Jesus Christ. How he died on the cross he shed his blood to pay for my sins, your sins, and the sins of the whole world. In the world right now, a lot of people are in darkness, you know. They can't see, but if you shine a little bit of Jesus to them, they may see, like you give them a little more and more, they're going to reach out and they may accept, ask God to forgive their sins, and God will save their soul. Amen. Amen. You know. So then in 35 it says, And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two Two pence. So he took out money. I'm not how two pence is not a lot of money, but obviously it, in the Bible times it was uh, I don't know if it's a couple pennies, but it, 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 it's uh, it's it's enough to pay for a room or pay, pay, help that man out and gave them to the host. So the guy who hosted the inn, the guy who had the, the the hotel at the time, gave it to him to take care of the man and said unto him, "Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee." So the man must have had a good, he must have come through to before because he said, I will repay thee. And I guess the man, you know, trusted and believed him, you know, and he saw, he saw God in this man. This guy was the good Samaritan to help him. And then it says, uh, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the sea thieves? You know, was it, uh, was it number one, the priest? No, he saw the man, he didn't help him. Was it number two, the Levite? No, he just looked upon the man, didn't help him. Three, the Samaritan, he helped the man. You know, he was, he was, he was put it this way, the religion will take you to hell, Jesus Christ will take you to heaven, only through Jesus Christ. You can't, religion, people, they don't talk, they don't tell you Jesus, they, they, they play, play religion, you know, uh, tradition, tradition of man will take you to hell. God says you make, you make uh, the word of God none of fact but through your tradition. You know, God's word tells us that God so loved the world in John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, will have everlasting life. So if you believe in Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive your sins, repent of your sins, turn to him, give it to him. He died on the cross. He shed his blood to pay for my sins, your sins, and the sins of the whole world. And he's just and able to forgive you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me, John 14, 6. Uh, you know, these, there was different people. So these were different people. The Jewish priest knew he should have helped the man, but he didn't. Let's look at 1 John 3, 17. 1 John 3, 17. 1 John 3, 17. You know, the priest, should, he knew better. It says in verse 317 of 1 John, But whoso, so that's anybody, whoever, hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion, so that, you know, you don't do something from, from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? And it says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. So we have to... We have to, you know, not just talk it, we got to walk it. You know, you could say, oh, I love God, but 
What are you doing in your life? Are you are you living godly? Are you are you doing what's right for God? Are you telling people about Jesus? You know, are you smoking, drinking? You know, are are you living? Uh, you know, you, are you going to church? Are you staying faithful to church? You know, are you staying faithful to studying your Bible every day? That's that's the number one thing. You stay close to God by studying your Bible. You know, here's a but it doesn't matter. You can get too much. You know your Bible and you study your Bible. When you get out in the world, you don't do nothing. So you have to, you have to, you have to do. You have to do. You have to do what you say. Amen. You have to apply it to your life. You have to apply God's word to your life, in your life, in your actions, and what you do. Let's look at Hebrews thirteen sixteen. Hebrews thirteen sixteen. Hebrews 13, 16. It says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not. So you know what? we got to do good. Not because I'm good, because Jesus is good, and good Jesus lives in me, the Holy Spirit, and guides me to do good and to communicate. You tell somebody else about Jesus Christ, how he died for their sins, forget not. For with, sac for, with such sacrifices... God is well pleased, so God is pleased. If you do that, God's pleased with you. I don't care if anybody else in the world is pleased if I'm handing out tracts. Oh, you shouldn't do that. I know God's pleased with me. If you give out a thousand tracts, and you know what? Nobody's happy with you. God's happy with you. Amen? you got to communicate. It says, forget not with such sacrifices. God is pleased. Let's look at Philippians 2.4. Philippians 2.4. You know, God's people are different. The real ones are different. You got to be different, you know. Philippians 2 4. You love God, you want to serve God. You want to see other people get saved. Trust Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Philippians 2 4. It says, not, Look, not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So, you know what? When God lives in you, he lives in you. Let your mind. So, you know, you're, you're, you know, you got to have the mind of Christ, which was in Christ Jesus. And it says, look not on your own things, but other people. You know what? It should be joy. They had joy. J-O-Y. First, Jesus first. Praise God. Give him the glory. Others next, other people, do things for them. Let give them some happiness. Yourself last. But the world teaches you, you first, me, me, I, I. And who's that? That's the devil. The devil said, I'm going to be above God. I'm going to be abide up above the clouds of uh, God. I'm going to be about the highest star. So God, that's the devil. You know, I, I, I. You know, we, we wanted, like I said, joy. Jesus, others, yourself. And we got to have compassion on others. We got to look to help others. Let's look at Galatians 6 2. Galatians 6 2. Galatians. Galatians 6 2. Bear ye one another's burdens as of soul fulfill the law of Christ. So, you know what? In the church, we got to bear each other's burdens. When somebody's tired, you help them. You, you be the strong person. If I get tired, you lift me up. Keep me going, you know. We got to bear each other the burdens because God, you know, God's in us. We gotta, we're supposed to bear one another's burdens to help to fulfill the law of Christ. We have to do God's will. Matthew 5.16. Matthew 5.16. And we have to have compassion on people. You know, the people in the world, it's a dark world. They don't know Jesus. They don't know God. Their father's the devil. The devil's been trying to trick them. He's got them on drugs, alcohol. He's got them blinded on money, on things of the world, on football, baseball. He's got them confused. They don't see that we need we need to shine Jesus Christ to them, shine the light light on them, show God's love, the love of Jesus, glorify them. Let's look at Matthew 5, 16. It says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in their house. 
in verse 16, or verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So you know what? Shine. Shine for Jesus Christ. And you do good, you're doing it, God, through you. They, they see God. You know, they see there's something different in you. You know, the people in the world, they want to take their money, they want to take things from them, and they don't want to give nothing back to them. We give, we do, you know what? There was a thing, they used to have a bracelet. What would Jesus do? So, what would Jesus do? And this with the man on the floor. So the priest, the two guys who were supposed to be of God, they walked away. They walked across the street. They walked away from him. But the good Samaritan, this guy might not even be religious, but he did what was right. But I do believe he trusted God because he did what was right. And you know what? That's what we're supposed to What would Jesus do? Jesus would have helped that man. We're supposed to be bearing one another's burdens. If somebody's hurt or sick in the church, especially brothers in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, we got to help each other. You know, we got to, we, we, we should show, we shouldn't argue. And if we do argue, ask for forgiveness and let it be. Yeah. Um, you know, Jesus had compassion on us. We got to have compassion on other people. When we're headed down the wrong road, you know, we're headed for lust, sin, and we're headed for, people are headed for hell. We got Jesus Christ. You know what? We're headed for heaven. But the people out here, we got to get them headed down the right road. Tell them about Jesus Christ. You know, they have to be headed. Let's look at Romans. You know, it's God's grace. You know, let's look at Romans 5, 6, and 8. Romans 5, 6, and 8. Romans 5, 6, and 8. Romans 5, 6. For when we were... For when we were yet without strength, so we didn't have strength. We were like this guy. We were beat down. We were in sin. We were in the world. You know, I was in sin. I was beat down. But in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So Jesus Christ died for me while I was yet a sinner, while you were yet a sinner, and for all the sinners in the world. Before, you know, he died for us, for our sin. He paid the sin, God's grace. And look at verse 8 of 5.8. It says, but God commendeth his love towards us. So God's love is like, it's the most love in the world. And in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So Christ died for you, me, and for the sins of the whole world. You know, Jesus' blood cleanses us from all sin. Let's look at 1 John 2.2. 2. 1 John 2.2. 2. 1 John 2.2. 2. It says, 1 John 2, 2 says, and he is the propitiation. So he's the payment. His blood paid for us for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So he paid. It's paid for. Your sin's paid for. All you got to do is repent, turn from your sin, give it to Jesus. He paid for it on the cross. Amen. His blood cleanses us from all sin. You know, he had compassion on us. We need to have compassion on others. Uh Let's look also at, uh, back in the text in uh, Luke 10, 36 and 37. Which now at these three thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? So Jesus asked, which one was the neighbor? Of course, it was a Samaritan. And he said, he did show mercy unto him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God wants you to have mercy. He wants you to have compassion on other people, you know. No, he went to him. He didn't go away to Samaritan. Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes into you. And he helps. He heals you of your sin. He paid for it. He takes it away. You go and do whatever. You take care of other people and help them. You know, he took care of a stranger. Let's look at Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. You know, it's not easy to help a stranger sometimes. You don't, you know, this person's laying there bleeding you know, you may see a person, you don't know what to do, you know. Yeah. You don't know what, what happened, you know. But you know what? God says to have mercy and do this to strangers, you know. Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. It says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. So 
If you can do good and help somebody in their time of need, do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee. You know, so, you know what? You want to do it then, now? Jesus says to do it. You, t you take care of them. Just like we were a stranger to God. I was a stranger to God. I didn't know Jesus, but now I know Jesus. I repented, I turned to Christ, and he forgave my sins. He saves us. So we have to tell, have compassion on other men. You know, the priest saw the man. He saw the man, but he didn't do nothing. The Levite looked on them, looked on him. He didn't do nothing. But the Samaritan helped the man. They were all on that road. We're on that road in life. We have to help people. We have to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ, how he died for their sins. Look at Matthew 20, 28. Matthew 20, 28. Matthew 20, 28. It says, even as the Son of Man, Jesus, came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So he came to minister to, to give his life. He became to assist, to help, to serve. You know what? Jesus said that his disciples said, who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? Me, me, or you, or this? You know what? He said, who's the servant? So when you serve people, when you're staying low, when you stay humble and low, God lifts you up, makes you the highest. You know, God told his disciples, he who's the servant is the greatest of all. You know, you know, the priest, the Levite, they had no compassion on the man, but the Samaritan, he had compassion and he helped this man. You know, what would Jesus do? Jesus would help the man, and that's what the Samaritan, you know, you know, you got to trust Jesus and stay on that right road. You know, bring them in, bring the wandering ones to Jesus. We got to bring these people, you know, they're out here. But we just got to tell them. We got to invite them to church. We got to give them a track. We got to witness, do a Bible study at work. You know, you know, when you're at church, everybody, hopefully people who've been there a while are saved. But, you know, when you get out in the world, most people aren't saved. So, you know, whatever way you can. You got children and people, oh, they're nice children. And they go, why do they look so, you know, handsome and beautiful? And go, you know, they dress nice for church because we're going to church. You want to come? <laughs> invite them to church. But you know what? Sometimes... People don't want to come, but you keep asking them. You know what? You extend that hand. You know what? Because if they don't come and Jesus comes back, their blood's not on your hands. Their blood. You you extended the gift of God. You give that gospel tract to somebody. They took it. That's between them and God. So you did what you did what you're supposed to do. Let's look at. You know, God. God. God doesn't. See, we see the outside of people. Let's look at First Samuel, sixteen seventeen. You know, we look at the outside of people, you know, sometimes we can't tell her. These people saved, they're not saved, you know, I don't know. But God knows. Yeah. And you know what, our job is just to tell people and uh, direct them. We're, we're the messenger. We're God's messengers. We've got to tell people about Jesus Christ. We're his messengers, and we have to tell others about him. You know, Jesus loved us unconditionally, you know, unconditional love he gives us. First Samuel 16 7 says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. So don't look how he looks. He told him, Don't look how he looks. You know, he could be skinny, he could be big, he could be fat, he could be mean looking, he could be happy looking. Don't look on his countenance or on the height of his stature. He could be real short, he could be real tall. Don't look at that because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. So God doesn't see as we see. God's ways aren't our ways. But God gives us instructions in His holy in His holy Word how to treat others, how to how to be God, show them God's love. But He says, "Because I have refused Him, for, for the Lord seeth not man as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance. So we look at somebody. I see your outward appearance. I don't know what you believe, what your heart. And then it says." But the Lord looketh on the heart. So God looks on the heart. God knows the heart. God looks at the heart. God can tell if you're saved. He can tell what you know what you're trying to do. You're trying to do as well. You're not trying to do as well. So we have to try to do we have to do his will. That's his commandment for us. You know, we're supposed to preach the gospel to every creature here, here and throughout the whole world. Amen. We need to have compassions on, on others. You know, there's souls out here tonight heading for hell. You know, we got to make time to tell them. 
You can't be too busy with things in the world. Take time to tell people about Jesus. You know, give them a track witness. Tell them how God loved them, how he died on the cross for their sins. You know, have compassion. Let's look at First uh, Jude 1, 20 to 25. Right before the end, before Revelation, Jude. You got to have compassion. You know, Jesus had compassion on me. Jesus had compassion on you. We got to have compassion on people. And Jesus says in verse in Luke in third in one eleven ten thirty seven, and he said, "He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus in him, Go and do thou likewise." But in Jude one twenty to twenty five says, "But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost." So, you pray in the Holy Ghost, which lives in you. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So, you know what? Jesus is going to come back one day. And when he comes, when that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ are going to meet him in, uh, in, the, in the air. And then we're going to meet him in the clouds and we're going to be with the Lord forever. And it says in verse 22, and of some have compassion, making a difference. So you got to have compassion. You can, you can, make, you can make a difference. You can make a difference. I can make a difference. You can make a difference. Just because you're one person, you might be the only person that trusts Jesus Christ in your family or wherever you're at at your work. You can make a difference. You could have that compassion in Jesus Christ. And others, save with fear. So you have fear. Man, you don't want to see that person go to hell. You know, you're pulling them out of the fire. They're already partway in there. You're grabbing them, hating even to see their garments spotted by the flesh. So, you know what? There's people that came to this church... 10, 15 years ago, there was 50, 50, 40 kids, 50 kids, where'd they all go? I still see some of them now. Now they're not kids. They're in their 20s. They're in the world. And you know what? I want to help them. I want to, I want to try to bring them back to God. I want to bring them back. I have fear. I don't want to say the wrong thing to push them farther away, but I want to grab a hold of them and pull them towards God, pulling them out of the fire, pulling them out of the world, pulling them out of sin, bringing them back to the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to do that. It says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. So you know what? If you try to reach these people, God's got you. You're not going to fall. The, the, the God's got you. If you're doing his will, he's protecting you. You can do whatever you want. You can win people to Jesus Christ. You can tell them about Jesus Christ. You can pull them out of the fire because God's got you. You're not going to get burned. God's going to pull you out. And it says, and to present yourself faultless, but before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So God's going to be happy, exceeding joy. God's happy. When you're trying to pull people out of the world, out of hell, from hell, he's happy with you. And it says, to the only wise God, our Savior, by glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. So that's forever and ever. Amen. So that's Jesus Christ. So we need to have compassion on others for their souls. Grab them, take, tell them you're in sin. You don't need, you know, you're headed for hell. You have to, you know, we got to pull them out of the fire. Beloved, God, have compassion, pulling them out. Get them off the wrong road, get them back on the right road to God. There's two roads. You know what? If you go down this road, it's the right road, and you trust in Jesus, you're going to heaven. If you're going down the wrong road, you're going into sin, lost sin, you're headed for hell. But grab a hold of them. Grab somebody. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them, please, you got to trust Jesus. Pull them back, and they can get back on that right road and ask God to forgive their sins, and Jesus Christ will save their soul, and they'll be on the right road. They'll be on the right road to heaven with you. Amen? Amen. Let's look at John 13.35. John 13.35. It says, By this shall all men that know ye, ye know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. So we got to, you know, all men know you belong to Jesus. You show his love, his compassion, tell them about Jesus, hand them tracts, tell them about him. Show in deed, word, and action, you know what, you love God, and you know what, they can see the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at Romans, Romans 5.5. 5. Romans 5.5. 5. And 
And it says, and hope. So we got the hope. We got the blessed hope. We got Jesus. Maketh not ashamed. So we're not ashamed to tell people about Jesus or telling them, hey, you're a sinner, and grab them out of the fire. Try to take them out from what sin they're in and tell them you need to turn to Jesus Christ because the love of God is shed abroad. So it's, you know, it's poured out. God's love is poured out in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You know, it says, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. So he died for me, you, and all these people out here who need to be saved to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. I'm going to close with this. 1 Corinthians 8.3. No, we have to get, we have to stay on the right road, not live in the spirit, do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We need to stay on that right road, narrow road, that narrow path, and get people off the broad road and bring them back and get them, tell them about Jesus Christ. And if they trust the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ will get them back on that narrow road, on the right road. 1 Corinthians 8.3 but if any man love God, the same is known of him. So you know what? If you love God and you're doing as well, people can see that. You can make a difference. One person can make a difference, you know. Even if nobody, like I said, if any nobody in your family, nobody at your work, nobody where you go store is saved, but one person can make a difference. Let it be known you love God. Bring up his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Anytime I'm at work, like some guy goes, hey, can I go? I go, I'm going to let you do I say, praise God. And they, oh, yeah, thank you, Jesus. So they hear that. You get glorify God's name and get them thinking, well, why are you doing this? You're not doing it. I'm not doing it for myself. I'm trying to glorify God. Amen? You know, you've got to shine. we got to show Jesus to people because you know what? The, the time's running out. End's coming. End's coming. Soon. Real soon. What just happened uh, in uh, Morocco? Hmm. Man, they have earthquakes and diverse places. I mean, half this town, I don't know how many people died there, but it was horrible. Thousands and thousands. Yeah, maybe more. I mean, it's just, you know, these are this is a prophecy. You know, wars, room, we got wars going on, rumors of war, earthquakes, fires, uh, all kinds of pestilences, foods not growing in places. And you know what? Jesus is coming back. But that's a good thing for us because, you know what, if you trusted Jesus Christ when he comes back, you know what? If he comes back while I'm alive, I'll never see death. You'll never see death, amen, because we're going to be gone, amen, but we need to tell others. You know, my, my, my prayer is that we can tell as many people as we can that they would repent of their sins and turn to Jesus Christ and, and just ask him to forgive their sins, and he is just and able to forgive them. Let's pray. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you. I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you for uh, teaching us, Lord. I pray that we can stay, stay, stay focused on you and stay in your word in the Bible and tell others that they need to get on the right road and get off the wrong road which they're heading. You know, two roads. One road's to you, Lord, and the other road's to hell. And it's separation from you. And we need to grab some people we know, our friends, our family, our enemies, people we know, and just grab them and pull them out of the, put our hand on them, pull them out of the fire by giving them your word, giving them a witness from your word. Lord, inviting them to church and fellowshipping with them and just telling them, just showing them that, that you save, 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 save people from, from sin, Lord. Your blood cleanses all sin. Lord, I pray for, uh, for us just to stand strong, in, uh, stand strong in the Spirit. Yes. In the Spirit, not in the flesh, Lord. I pray that you keep us strong in the Spirit and use us for your will that we can reach some people and tell them about you, how that you died for their sins and that you can save their souls. I pray that you uh, watch over us, keep us safe, and in your will, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Uh, One hundred eighty. Bring them in. One hundred eighty. One hundred eighty. Hark! Tis the shepherd's voice I hear, out in the desert, dark and drear, calling the sheep who've gone astray, far from the shepherd's fold away. Bring them in, bring them in, 
Bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring the wandering ones to Jesus. Who'll go and help this shepherd kind? Help him the wandering ones to find. Who'll bring the lost ones to the fold? Where they'll be sheltered from the cold. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring the wandering ones to Jesus. Out in the desert hear their cry. Out on the mountains wild and high. Hark, tis the Master speaks to thee. Go find my sheep wherever they be. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring the wandering ones to Jesus. It's our job, bring the wandering ones to Jesus, amen? So this week, try to take a couple extra tracks in your pocket. Be a witness. Give them the people. You know what? We were handing out tracks, and the people who you wouldn't think take tracks, they took tracks. And the people you think, oh, they'll take tracks for sure. Their family will take. They, I don't need it. I don't want it. I don't need that junk. Well, you know what? Everybody needs Jesus. Every single person needs Jesus. So we got to ask every single person. Sure. We can't, you know, God's not a respecter of persons, and we're not a respecter of persons. So when you see those people who you think won't take them, offer them a and track, yeah. and you'll be surprised. One time, I think, Mickey, one time, we were at a gas station, and I seen these guys, they look like a bunch of, yeah, they were bikers, you know, and I was like, look at my ah, these guys are, look like they're, you know, I don't know, pretty rough looking dudes, and I, I just thought, I didn't think, I was pumping gas, and she went out and handed them tracks, and they're all, oh, thank you, so praise God, you know, God gets the glory, amen, shame on me, I need to, you know, we have to be that witness, you know, whatever you see, just stop at a gas station, offer a track, yep. you see somebody pumping gas, offer them a track, you know, at work when you can, you know, offer a track, and if they don't take it, they don't take it. At least you offer it to them. Right. That way, the blood is off your hands. And you know what? And God's happy with you when you do His will and His word. You try to share His word and His love for other people. You know what? God's happy with you. So we need to do that. Amen. Amen. Let's pray again. Dear Lord, thank you again. Thank you for uh, Your word. Thank you for dying on the cross for our my sins and the sins of the whole world, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I pray. I just pray that we can be used for you, that yes. we could uh, tell others about you and give us strength, give us boldness, and keep us safe, Lord. I pray for a hedge of protection around us. I pray for traveling mercies and safety for Sailor, Nucre, and the kids back to Nebraska. I pray you blessed them. I pray that they had a good time and that you'd get the glory in it, Lord. I pray that they can make it back to their church service Sunday and glorify you, Lord. And, Lord, that we can come back here on Sunday and glorify you. I pray for Frankie, for his safety, and for his wife, and for family, and for his job, that you bless him and keep him safe and in your will, Lord. And Miss Lurleen, uh, I pray for her health and her son, Stephen, and uh, her family members, Skip and Tanya and Allison and Cindy and uh, all the other family members, I pray that you'd help them and draw them nigh to you and you'd draw nigh to them, Lord. I pray that you'd use me this week at work and wherever I go, Lord, let me be a witness for you and for my wife, for her health, and I pray for her for her to be a witness for you and that we can be used for you, Lord, for your glory. I pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth, is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great King. At Psalms 48, 1 and 2, and Steve Sajak in Texas, we love you. May God be with you and help you, brother, and... Uh, Danny Jockel in Tennessee, we're praying for you. We're praying for uh, Jimmy, Jimmy at the Montclair. We're praying for the people in Texas. Uh, I know the heat, the heat might have missed this week, start getting a little cooler. I know you guys been in the hundreds, and uh, we're like in beautiful weather in the 60s and 70s. So praise God. May God be go with you and be with you and until uh, we come again. Amen. And I pray for the Moo family. Frankie, come here. 
Or this is yeah, Frankie. Franklin. There's Franklin. There's Franklin here. Let's get him in here. There's Franklin. We've been out traveling the city or to Illinois here. And God, God gives this young man a special blessing and his sister Lily. Come here, Lily. These people go and serve God. They sing, they praise God, and they love God, and they want to serve God. And Jonathan, too, look at this. You come to Jesus as little children, you can't enter the kingdom of God. you got to come like these little children. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Pray for them for their uh, trip tomorrow back to Nebraska, to Lincoln, Nebraska, that they'd have traveling mercies. God would be with them, and God would bless Sailor, New Creator, family. And the baby, too. They got a baby, a four-month-old baby there. Bless that baby. Amen. Ezreal. <laughs> and uh, they got to bless them. And uh, Miss Lurleen, Frankie, may God bless you people. Have a good night. And God keep us safe till we come again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.